Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to learn how to install the high pressure fuel pump insulator. This is for a TSB or bulletin that was updated by GM not too long ago. I'll provide everything you need, tools, diagrams, and the TSB itself. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so first thing we're going to do here is we're going to remove the wiper arm. Now to remove the wiper arm, the service manual does state that to remove the wiper arm you must first remove the wiper. I don't really think that's necessary because you're taking the whole thing off anyways. So we're just going to negate that and move on. So first thing you're going to want to do here is you want to remove the wiper fluid canal. So just take that and pull straight up out of the inlet and you can set that to the side. Next there's a little cap here near the motor. You want to take that, lift it up, underneath it there's a nut. This nut is 15 millimeters, and whenever you torque this on later, it's 25 foot-pounds or 35 newton meters. But once you get that off, the service manual does state that to remove the wiper arm, you may need to take it and wiggle it up and down, kind of like that. Now, of course, mine's loose because I've already done that, but even then, it's still pretty tough to get these off you know these are exposed to the weather after a while they'll seize up and they stick now show you all the inside of this fitting here of also why it's so difficult as you can see it's ridged and this also helps keep a good bite on it and that's why it's so difficult to remove now when installing it later on these little ridges are going to kind of make it easy or difficult depending on how you see it to install this back on Whenever you do it, you want to make sure that your wiper blade is either right on par or right underneath what GM calls the black void. Now, there's a little black piece here, like for my vehicle, I got this little square piece here. I mean, all of our cars has it, but mine, it's directly in line with the border of the bottom of the windshield. That's So that's what I'm going to be using to measure the distance of how far it needs to go up. So just whatever kind of identifier y'all can use to make sure that it's clearing the area that it needs to. You don't want it going too far down because then you're clashing the bottom of your air inlet. You don't want it too far over because then it's going off the side of the window. So make sure to find that sweet spot, find your identifier so that you get it on correctly. All right, so next up, we're gonna remove the air inlet grill. There's two types of retainers holding this on you'll have six of these little christmas tree retainers there's three on each side so you got three and then there's one here it'll be on the inside of your doorway here just like so so one two three and then there's three more on the other side so six there you can you remove these with a flat bladed tool or a retainer tool and then you'll have six of these bolts these are seven millimeter bolts they're 10 newton meters or 89 inch pounds to torque on later so you'll have one here two three four five and then one at the very end so you'll have those six there now whenever you remove oh also there's a little tab on here that holds this little line you can just pull that out uh, whenever it comes to removing your air and lit grill you want to be very very careful as there's tabs all underneath here and it's almost like they grip onto the bottom of the windshield so whenever you pull it you almost want to try to slide it forward and then out so the driver's side i find is a little easier granted my tabs are broken so that's probably why but try to slide it out and then up and then i can show you more accurately here because i still have a functioning tab on this side so i'm going to take this try to slide it forward a bit and then up and then out as a swivel motion like that and to show y'all what my tabs look like and why they're broken I had a windshield replacement whenever I first bought the vehicle I had a huge crack in my windshield and in order to replace the windshield you got to remove this guy so if you take a look here so this is what the tabs look like as you can see they're kind of swiveled which is why i said they grip underneath the windshield 
and then here's the rest of my tabs each one of them are broken because of the windshield replacement granted they did i understand they didn't know how to do it but still man that that sucks and these are hard to find too so that's how you're going to replace that be careful of those tabs remember kind of slide forward and then back and whenever you install it you know try to try to swoop under i guess you could say try to install it like that all right so next here's our fuel pump and as you can see it's in the back of the engine so we have this bracket around the fuel pump that we need to remove and then here's the connection for it so there's a a bolt here a bolt here and not this back bolt there but this one on the very bottom so those two and then this one right here now these are all 10 millimeter bolts and whenever you torque them on later it's 35 newton meters or 25 foot pounds of torque so first we'll need to remove those three bolts to get to our connector and our insulator all right now that all the bolts are off the bracket here there's one more connection we need to remove and that's this little hose right here it's connected directly to the bracket just take it and push it out just like that and you can take your bracket and kind of wiggle it out from the bottom it's gonna be a real tight squeeze though so just be aware of that come on you may want to remove the top bracket here There's your bracket. All right, so next we're gonna be removing the insulator and this connector here. So the way you're gonna remove this connector is just take your little insulator here. You can kind of slide that off out of the way so you can get to your connector easier. And there's a little tab on the bottom here that you'll press down until you hear a click. And then you can just pull out. And once that's out, you can just slide your insulator out from there and your insulator's free. All right, now when installing the pump insulator, it's gonna be oriented like so. As you can see, there's a hole here and then there's one on the back as well. That's gonna be for this little wire down here and then this one way down here. So slide that on here probably better to do it through the front there we go yeah much easier so let's wrap that hose around here push that through there and then wrap it around the one on the bottom so that's good and tight there and then you can connect your piece just take that and push it in until it clicks and that's how you're gonna install that all right now whenever you install this you're gonna install it in this orientation here. And unlike how I did it earlier, we're gonna do it from the front because this is a whole lot easier than how I did it. It's gonna slide up just like that. You're gonna clip in your connection here so it kind of holds it in place. And then you can install your three bolts. And I would go ahead and unplug this whenever you go to install it just so that you have more room and then you can reconnect it. All right, so we got our bracket on and everything. So I do want to make a quick tip here or a note. Uh, whenever you remove your insulator, there's a good chance that it may be covered in oil. I know mine was, so whenever I first saw it, I was kind of like, uh-oh, I, I may have a leak here. But if you look at where the insulator is, the oil cap is right above it so if your oil cap or the area is covered in oil then it's a good chance it's really whenever you did your last oil change or whenever an oil change was done they missed it and it landed on the side and it just so happens to drain down right onto your insulator so if your oil uh, insulator has oil on it be sure to keep that in mind it's less likely a leak and more likely just messy work so once that's done put on your air inlet 
uh, make sure like I said earlier line up your wipers whenever you get those on and uh, make sure everything works turn it on your car uh, make sure your fuel pump is still working correctly make sure your wipers are working correctly and in the right orientation uh, and other than that you're all set to go good job leave you all with another quick note here as you can see we got this hose here this is your washer line now you want to make sure you connect this from the bottom or underneath your air inlet grill i'll show you exactly where that's at so that whenever you put your air inlet grill on you you're not wondering where's my washer fluid so this is the passenger side it's going to go right in here make sure you push that in a decent amount but that's going to be the note i'll leave there all right thanks for checking out the video I hope it was some help to y'all. I want to remind y'all to check out my Google Drive. I got a lot of information on there regarding the Kappas, ranging from the Solstice to the Skies and the Opal GTs. I got TSBs, diagrams, part numbers, catalogs, a lot of good stuff on there. So don't forget to check that out. I'll see y'all next time, and until then, y'all take care.